Hello, welcome to Neobiotech International Virtual Seminar. Thank you for attending this online lecture. And my name is Gabriel Lee. I'm going to be the host for today. Please check the schedule for this month. And for 21st day next week, the language will be Spanish. And for 28th day, maybe Russian. So do not miss them if you are speaking those languages. For today's lecture, Dr. Yasushi Nakajima from Japan will speak about treatment for peri-implantitis. For one hour, he will give his idea and knowledge about how to treat peri-implantitis. Please use chat button to communicate with me about any issues other than topic. We're gonna have a Q&A session after lecture, so please submit your question through the Q&A button. Speaker may not answer for all questions because we have a limited time to take all questions. If you have more questions or anything for discussion, please contact me by the website or Facebook page or email address. Okay, now let's have the speaker for today for starting. Please welcome to Dr. Nakajima. Hello, doctor. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, I'm hearing you. How are you today, doctor? Yes, fine. Thank you. I'm okay. very fine. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So, are you ready for the lecture? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, I'm ready now. All right, okay, so please start. Okay, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleague, uh, thank you very much for giving me that uh, great presentation, the uh, chance here. A really special thanks to the Neobiotic Company. And um, one thing is I'm a little bit uh, uh, miss you because of the COVID-19, but next time I would like to really uh, meet each other. Then today's my topic is the treatment of for peripantitis. I belong in the Osaka Dental University as the clinical professor there. Okay. Then uh, I believe uh, implant treatment is the one with the best uh, choice for the patient uh, to the edentious uh, area. And also the, we can provide to the patient to very nice aesthetic result. But the point is how can we uh, maintain this station? Means we really need to uh, uh, control the uh, peripant tissue as much as possible. So today I will talk about that. Then uh, some patients is very unlikely. Uh, he has the uh, implant infection, has a very deeper pocket, also swelling. Then this patient uh, complained to me that this is uh, very painful because of the swell of the implant. Then he asked me to remove the implant. Also this time, the company provided us a very nice uh, tool, which is the fixture removal kit. that easily removed the uh, integrated implant very short time. But I would like to stop the station. Then today's topic will be uh, three of this. One is how to uh, monitoring of the peri-implant tissue. Second, treatment of peri-implant mucositis. Then third, treatment of peri-implantitis. Let's start that. But before uh, my presentation starting, I would like to uh, confirm the uh, definition of the peri-implant disease. They have the two of the uh, disease here. One is peri-implant mucositis is localized lesion with that bone loss on the implant. For example, this uh, evidence uh, proved by the 
uh, Professor Linda's group, if implant and natural tools as a uh, plaque accumulation around the uh, tissue, they started the uh, uh, infection. Also, not only the implant, also the uh, natural tools. This means this is caused by the dental plaque accumulation. That is the point. The next one is the peri-implantitis. This is definition of the peri-implantitis is localized region include bone loss around implant. This means that what is the difference between the mucositis and the peri-implantitis is uh, bone loss. This also uh, proved by the Professor Linda's group and their animal study the comparison of the peri-implantitis and the periodontitis. Then uh, also this is the animal study, then they check the uh, clinical and dendrographic result. Uh, this is that they place the implant to the animal. Also that they have the uh, very healthy natural tooth of the uh, animals. Then they try to uh, accumulate the dental plaque uh, several months. Then after uh, implant the word uh, teeth, found the bone loss, at that time they started their uh, evaluation. Then clinical and dendrographic result is uh, implant is more enhanced than natural teeth. And also histology specimen, size of the inflammation is more bigger at the implant site than uh, natural teeth site. Then third, the region at the implant, but not at teeth extended into the bone marrow. This is a big difference between the periodontitis and the uh, peri-implantitis. For example, this is the shame of the natural tooth. You can see that uh, here, this is the plaque accumulation. Then the uh, opposite side, they have the uh, inflammatory cells here. But uh, this inflammatory cells never go into the bone because of the exist of the uh, periodontal ligament here, so-called safety zone. Again, at the natural tooth, uh, inflammatory cells never go into the bone. But the opposite side, this is the implant side, they have the no uh, periodontal ligament here, there's no safety zone, means uh, inflammatory cells are more bigger than the uh, periodontal side. And so these inflammatory cells go into the bone or bone marrow directly. This is a big difference that we should understand what is that's going on. Then this is a, another report that the incidence of the periplant disease, uh, this is reported by the Professor Nikola Zitzman, uh, 2008. But this is the first, I think this is the first report for the incidence of the periplant disease. Then on their literature, uh, they said uh, periplant mucositis is 80% uh, per patient, also 50% per, uh, per implant. And the peri-implantitis is 28% to 56% per patient and 12 to 43% per implant. So it's a quite a uh, big, huge number of the uh, incidence of the peri disease. I think it's like the tsunami. For example, if the patient understand the uh, implant has the, will be the infection, a lot of the uh, patients come to your office then maybe they claim or they help uh, ask to you to treat this um, disease. Maybe how can I avoid this uh, problem? But I think we can control this problem. Okay, to avoid this station, first we go to the monitoring of the peri implant uh, tissue. We should understand what is the healthy implant uh, tissue or uh, infected tissue is. Normally, peri-implantitis is starting from number one to number five. For example, first, they have the uh, breeding, second, pocket dips deeper, third, suppression, and fourth, uh, bone loss. Then fifth, finally, implant will be lost. First of all, you can uh, use the probe around the implant. Then at that time, you uh, probe uh, to the uh, implant sulcus or uh, pocket with the 0.15 newton centimeters, uh, which is 
just only 15 grams, very, very light pressure compared to the natural tooth as 25 grams, okay? At that time, you will find that uh, breathing here, so-called BOP plus. This is starting of the periodontal disease. Then second, pocket depth. Pocket depth is a bit depend on the portion of the implant, uh, vertical portion. Deep implant has, should have a deep uh, pocket, or the shallow implant should have a shallow pocket depth. But the point is that when you place the uh, superstructure, at that time you should measure the uh, baseline uh, pocket depth. Then regularly you should check the uh, increase of the pocket depth. That's the uh, problem. Okay. Third, if you leave the uh, deeper pocket, the implant will have the suppression. If you push that uh, um, tissue area, then the white liquid and a very sticky liquid will come out from the uh, implant sulcus, sometimes with the bleeding here. This is the pass. The normally, uh, this kind of station, uh, the even deeper pocket sh should be exist. Then fourth, we should, uh, if you have the deeper pocket, I thought you had better to take the X-ray. Then uh, this is the uh, defect. We can uh, check the defect here. But also this uh, X-ray variation also same, uh, we should compare to the baseline. After you uh, setting the final resolution, at that time you should take the X-ray, then you make that the uh, baseline. Then how much? bone loss will be increased or not. That's the point. Then finally, implant mobility. Mobile implant, we cannot serve, uh, survive anymore. This is the sign of just ex uh, take off the implant as soon as possible with the finger very easily, okay? But sometimes the uh, implant mobility uh, makes by the, uh, Superstructure or abutment fracture, abutment uh, screw fractures. Such a case, uh, the Melvatic provides the very nice uh, kit, which is the uh, screw removal kit. When you find uh, this station here, it's a uh, fractured screw here. Then uh, normally this screw should be the moved. So please don't touch the use the ultrasonic device or air turbine, never do that. First, you check the very gently, you check this is a move or not. And sometimes I use the uh, uh, coramine inside. Just uh, uh, try to uh, remove the plug. Then it started uh, moving. Then with the uh, screw remover kit here, like this. So easily taking off the uh, screw, fracture screw. Okay, back to the uh, topic. There may be some of them that will worry about the uh, probing around the implant. But this is already proved by the Professor uh, Lang's group, uh, Dr. Etter. Uh, they said that uh, on the animal study, uh, first they place the implant and make the healing, the healthy uh, station. Then they uh, try to the, uh, probe this area. Actually, the, when I probe, the X-ray uh, attachment will be a little bit damaged, but uh, after the seven days, it will be recovered completely. So no adverse effect on the integrity of the peri-implant soft tissue seal should occur from repeated probing. So you don't have to mind to do the uh, probing of the implant. Then also not only the probing, also we really need uh, uh, X-ray bone uh, loss. This is statement by the ITI, diagnosis of uh, peri-implantitis to acquire the presence of BOP as well as progressive bone loss. So you should take, uh, if you need, you should take the X-ray to check the bone loss. Then to avoid this kind of station, we really need a maintenance gear, which is uh, it is important to ensure recall at the regular interval. Uh, for example, my uh, clinic, I recall them three to four months each, but uh, well, uh, for a control patient, I recall six months, for example, but depend on you. 
Okay, now you understand how to monitor the peri tissue. The next topic is treatment of peri implant mucositis. As, as I told you, mucositis is uh, only the uh, inflammation uh, in the uh, mucosa you. Then how can we uh, treat this uh, situation? This is also uh, reported by the Professor Landis Lungs Group, and this is also animal study. They place the implant and make a healthy healing. After that, they try to make the six week after plaque formation here. Then this is a hysteria specimen. Only six weeks, sure, there is no bone loss. However, at the uh, granulation tissue area, they have a lot of the inflammatory cells here. Right? Then treat, what is the treatment? Treatment is just brushing or plaque control. Then after the plaque control, the, all of the uh, inflammatory cells are gone. So it's been concluded that only three to four millimeter pocket of a uh, perimplant mucositis, the mechanical effect alone is sufficient to achieve clinical and histological resolution of mucositis lesions. And also histologically, uh, treatment can uh, minimize the inflammation uh, compatibly with cells. So just brushing, just taking off the plaque is the uh, most effective treatment for the uh, perimeter mucositis. This patient referred to my clinic as the maintenance phase. Then uh, my, then the hygienist checked that this uh, perimeter tissue. Then she found the uh, bleeding. Then immediately she started the uh, PMTC, uh, mechanical cleaning this area. Okay. Then how should we do that? How should uh, this patient do that? Should she come back next three months again? Or should we do something more? Maybe something wrong. So what should we do is, I recommend this. If you find the uh, uh, breathing or probing around the implant, at that time, we should check the, uh, the patient brushing manner. So at that time, we should uh, in, in to, uh, instruct the proper uh, brushing technique to the patient. That is the most important thing. For example, how can we understand the uh, patient pro uh, control manner? I used to use the here, sulcus bleeding index, so-called SBI. This is, looks like the probing, but a, a little different. What did I do is uh, just touch the uh, implant sulcus area. At that time, if you find a breeding, what does that mean? Sulcus touching means I just touch this area. This area means in opposite, this is a plaque accumulation here. If they have the, uh, more than the uh, six weeks of plaque accumulation here, this started the uh, inflammation. So it means if I touch this area, then I find the <coughs> breeding means patient plaque control is not so nice. Okay. Also patient understand how can they do that by themselves. Daily plaque control by the patient. This uh, interdental brush is very effective to the patient. If patient uh, uh, observe the breathing on the interdental brush, that's the infection. So we should uh, teach them, if you have the uh, breathing on the brush, that is no good. At that time, you should come back to the off uh, dental office. Okay, this patient referred to my clinic and then they placed the implant at another clinic and, and also he uh, regular interval to the other, another uh, clinic. But she just uh, had a complaint to uh, complain that then come to my office. Then this is the station. I check the implant, per implant tissue area. You can see that a lot of the breathing here, but uh, not so uh, deeper pocket here. The first I introduce the uh, plug control with the interdental the brush. Then I ask the patient, please do this once a day. And then this is cleaning by yourself. And finally, you will stop the breathing, please do that. After one week later, she just come back again, but still a little bit uh, breathing that. 
then problem is uh, this is a very over countered crown onto the implant. Then I just uh, uh, grinding that this crown to easy to access the implant shoulder by the uh, internet brush. The final result is this, only two millimeter pocket depth, also uh, BOP minus. Then this area becomes very healthy now. Okay, I would like to uh, summarize the super uh, mucosal flow control. 76% of the implant had a reduction in BOP. 38% implant had completed the resolution of BOP. But some percent of the implant still have the BOP now. But you should uh, continuously control them as much as possible. That's very important. Okay, this is the final topic is a treatment of peri-implantitis. They have two choices. Treatment of peri-implantitis, one is a non-surgical treatment, second one is a surgical treatment. I'm sure if you choose a surgical treatment, they have a better result. But when I think about the patient mind, patient doesn't like to do the surgery a lot. So that means in my clinic first, I try to use the uh, non-surgical treatment first. Then, if the patient didn't get a good result at that time, I approach that to switch to the uh, surgical treatment. So, at that time, patient very easy to understand to go to the surgical uh, treatment. But the point is, uh, after this is a very important point. After introduction of super mucosal plaque control, it must be stopped the SBI. This means uh, to establish the uh, oral hygiene by uh, patient themselves. Then after that, we should go to the sub, uh, sub uh, mucosal area. Okay, this patient already introduced the uh, 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 mucosal control, but still he has a six millimeter pocket dips and the BOP plus. I'm sorry, it's, you cannot see the uh, pocket dips, but it's here it's a six millimeter pocket dips with a BOP plus. Then we can go into the uh, pocket area using the uh, ultrasonic device or titan curate. Then we can do as much as possible. This is three months later. Then the uh, mucosa is a little bit uh, reduction, shrinkage, but you can see the pocket dips uh, change to six millimeter to three millimeters and without breathing. This is a very healthy station after three months. This means non-surgical treatment is effective for, for, uh, to this patient. And also I should uh, continuously check this patient regular interval. This is after five years. Again, it's the same thing. We check the SBA first. SV minus means the patient performs a good oral hygiene. Then next, uh, we can prove the area with the 0.15 Newton centimeters. The pocket depth is almost three millimeters and no breathing on probing. It's still, this implant is healthy after five years. Okay. Also the no bone loss in this implant they healthy. So that means that I can stop the uh, perimplantitis. But some of them is very worried about the uh, damage of the implant surface by the ultrasonic or metal uh, curate and so on. Then sometimes I do the very gentle way because I, I have the uh, dental hygienist. Sometimes I ask her to control the uh, sub uh, mucosal area. What should I do is uh, first, I'm monitoring the uh, implant uh, tissue. And here I can see the six millimeter pocket depth and BOP plus. First, I introduce the super gimbal uh, flow control. Uh, this is uh, after two, week, uh, two weeks later, still breathing here. Then we can go into the sub marginal area flow control by the uh, internet brush, very gently. Then this is after the one month later, the implant is very, become very healthy, pocket depth reduced to the three millimeters and no breathing on probing. Okay, that's a very gent uh, gentle way. 
But I would like to have the more uh, effective way or powerful way. Then nobody company provide us the ginger brush. This is more powerful compared to the just interdental brush. So this is the one with the interdental brush, but it's an ultrasonic device. Also, it is possible to irrigate uh, using uh, some uh, chemical solution. For example, this patient has the uh, suppression at the implant area. This is also after the uh, introduce of the supra uh, mucosal pra control. But the sub uh, mucosal area, they have the six millimeter pocket depth, just the BOP plus, and also suppression. Then I try to use the uh, ginger brush in this area to remove the plaque underneath the uh, margin here. The ginger brush is very easily inside, insert to the uh, implant pocket with the ultrasonic effectively, also irrigation. Also the take off the plaque very uh, effectively. I really like this. Also my uh, hygienist also use this. Very easy way. Okay. Then after two weeks later, this is the result of that. Already expression already stopped, but still a little bit deeper pocket, almost five millimeters. Then BOP plus, but the uh, BOP is a little bit reduced than the uh, treatment before. Right. In such a case, I also the, the patient back to the regular interval. I check the normally once uh, the month. Then final, uh, finally the BOP minus, then I switch the three months interval. Okay, next more powerful device is uh, eye brush. Eye brush is normally used the uh, uh, surgical treatment. Open flap, then use the eye brush on the decontaminated area. Also, this can use the flapless approach. Don't make the flap. It's non-surgical approach, right? I tried to use the eye brush a lot, but before then, I tried to use the another devices, another company devices. But it, it does a little bit, sometimes it doesn't work. For example, this brush is too big to not into the uh, implant pocket at all. Then, but the uh, eye brush is very narrow uh, diameter, very easy to access to the implant deeper pocket. For example, this is a, you see the nine millimeter pocket depth here, a BOP plus. I don't uh, elevate the flap. I just, just a flapless station. After two weeks later, uh, nine millimeter pocket depth will change to the only four millimeters. Still a little bit reading here. But it's become very better uh, clinical outcome here. Okay. Then I'd like to conclude the uh, non surgical therapy is uh, we can get a greater reduction in BOP. But the question is uh, is it possible to arrest a bone loss with pericarditis? Means uh, it's very difficult to stop the uh, bone loss only by the non surgical therapy. But uh, I think this is very use, useful for the uh, elder uh, patient or patient doesn't like to surgery or uh, patient need a surgery. But uh, before the one step before, we should try to uh, non surgical therapy. Okay. Then if you cannot get a good result by the non surgical treatment, we should go to a surgical treatment. But also, this is mostly. Uh, again, very important things. After introduction of supra mucosal pra control, it must stop the SPI, right? It means uh, establish the uh, pra control by uh, patient cells. When I open the flap, we will have the uh, granulated tissue and decontaminate the implant surface. So how shall I do that? 
and we should uh, de uh, clean the implant surface. First choice is a gauze soaking with saline. We can use the gauze and then saline solution. This is the most simplest way to do and also very cost, very cheaper. Another choice is carbon or titanium chloride. I try to scratch the contaminated implant surface as much as possible. This is the second choice. The third choice is ultrasonic device. If you have the titanium tip with the ultrasonic device, also possible. This is the third choice. And then number four is a rotary device like the eye brush. That's also, this is not cost a lot and very effective and very speedy. I really like this. If you have the money, you can also select the air powder operation. This is, this is also the one with choice to the contamination of the implant surface. If you have the more money, you can also the choice the uh, LV Miyago laser. It's also very uh, effective way, but it costs a lot. So everybody asked me that what is the best uh, choice to uh, decontaminate the implant surfaces. In this moment, there's no evidence for superiority of any one approach. So it means you can use whatever you like, or even you can combination each other. But uh, for the device, uh, sometimes I would like to use the uh, titanium brush, but titanium brush is some uh, problem because it's very soft. For example, sometimes as the, this kind of brush, and this is a pure titanium brush, but you can see it sometimes doesn't work. This is also pure titanium brush, also a uh, little bit expensive one, but you can see all over the brush, is a what can say lining it doesn't work at all even it costs a lot but eye brush this is uh made of the stainless steel but if you don't mind the uh, metal contamination on the implant surface for example resective surgery i like to use this because it really this make the implant surface shiny I will show you the one case. Uh, this is the perimeter uh, cases here. You can see the bone, this is the uh, bottom of the bone defect here. And you can see the oral fistula here. Then probing at this 11 millimeter pocket depth here. Then the patient asked me to the surgical approach. The first, I make the uh, full sickness flap. Then elevate the flap. I can find a lot of the granulation tissue around the implant. This eye brush also very easily remove the granulation tissue around the implant. Then continuously I apply the eye brush to the decontaminated the implant surface as much as possible. I think it's really effective. Then in this case, I did only the resective surgery. I didn't do regenerate at all. Then this is after one year later. Uh, Surface splitting index also nice. A patient performed a very good oral hygiene. Okay, next check the uh, breathing index. Just touch the uh, entrance of the uh, sulcus. Then next. I push the with the 0 0.15 Newton centimeters uh, pressure. This is the uh, probing depth. I can find a little bit slight breathing here, but you can see the pocket depth changes to the three millimeters. So this means uh, after the surgical treatment, 11 millimeter pocket depth changed to the three millimeters, but still a little bit uh, breathing is here. So I should control this area more and more. This is uh, before and after. Still, 
we cannot get a lot of the bone gain here, but uh, obviously say, I can stop the uh, bone resorption compared to the before the surgery, okay? Then also the neobiotic also provide us a more powerful and a more speedy uh, devices, which is R brush, round brush, R brush. The I like is uh, this is the made of the titanium alloy. So maybe I think this is it. Uh, if you don't like the metal contamination to the implant surface, you should use this device. Diameter is four and five millimeters. We should use the 1,000 to 5,000 RPM speed. And also this is a disposable device. It's a really powerful one. For example, this patient also has a very deeper pocket, almost nine millimeters, you open the flap. And then this R brush is very uh, useful for the, for example, uh, locator abutment. Well, before I use this, you should remove the super surface first. Then this is the effect of the R brush. Very short time, we, uh, this can have a very shiny implant surface. But the problem is that the bottom of the uh, defect is a little bit difficult to access the eye brush. At that time, I also use the eye brush combination. Eye brush for the bottom of the uh, bone defect, then an um, implant surface should use the eye brush. That is a very effective way. This after one years later, uh, obviously they have their uh, mucosa reduction here, but probing is a uh, getting better. First, sulcus breathing depth minus probing depth. Here is a one, uh, 11 millimeter probing depth. And this is only the two to three millimeter probing depth now. And no breathing on probing, totally healthy now. If you like the regenerative therapy, at that time I recommend to use the here T brush, which is the pure titanium uh, burr and the R brush, which is a type of alloy. This, I would like to show you the one case to use the uh, regenerative th uh, therapy. First, this is a uh, aesthetic side. I try to uh, engross the uh, mucosa top of the implant like this, but still you can see the uh, suppression here. Then what did I do is uh, first open the flap, Then this is a crystal incision, a little bit uh, back outside because of the, yeah, they have the uh, pus discharge here. Then sulcus incision, then open the flap, then remove the granite tissue around the implant. Then I tried to use the T brush, which is the made of ti pure titanium. Then also combination with the R brush. Very speedy clean up the decontaminated implant surface. I really like this. Then bottom of the uh, defect, I also use the titanium crate, also T brush again. Then you can see that this is the uh, difficult uh, bottom is almost seven millimeters. Then try to regenerate the, uh, this area. This is the uh, releasing incision. Uh, this is uh, information from the Professor Lee uh, Beksu in Kyonghi University. He's my teacher. Okay, then the tension-free wound uh, closure. The placement of the bone filler on the implant. Also the buccal side too. Then covered with the collagen membrane. Then sutured with the tension free. First I did the uh, vertical uh, matter suture to this flap. Very gently, tension free. Then finally, 
closing suture as a single suture, this area. Then, this is the before the surgery. This is after surgery. This is a previous GBR area. And uh, this is a uh, new area, okay? This is a, a 10 years uh, before, which is a nice GBR area. Unfortunately, patient has a uh, wound uh, exposure. Yeah, maybe I don't know why, but the patient uh, touch on it here a lot. Or another thing is that uh, this area is a contaminated area. So maybe this is not good for the GBL because of the contamination areas here. Then unfortunately, I cannot get a good uh, aesthetic result. But this is uh, two years later. Papilla is a little bit come back, but still they have the uh, mucosal reduction almost two millimeters. Then this is the uh, aesthetic point of view. Uh, we cannot accept this uh, clinical result, uh, the aesthetic result. However, for the patient, we can see the only the three millimeter uh, pocket depths and the breathing or probing, nothing. It's become the healthy tissue. That in this moment, the patient is uh, very satisfied about that. But for me, as uh, unsatisfied because of the, I couldn't give her the a nice, as the result. Okay. Then surgical therapy, I will conclude that. Release of the BOP, suppression, pulling depths, and the arrest, bone loss for 58% of implant side over five years. This was reported. Okay. So big point is this, uh, surgical therapy is uh, arrest the bone loss, stop the bone loss. That is a very big point compared to the non-surgical therapy. Okay. If you did a lot of things, still, you cannot get a good result. At that time, uh, we should do the explantation, take it off the implant. Sometimes it will happen. And for example, this patient referred to me, also that she has a lot of complaint because of that of the swelling around the implant. Here, I measured the pro probing and the nine millimeter pocket depths. But the x-ray, they have no uh, bone resorption. It looks uh, very strange. What the problem is, uh, this implant was very pressed, very deep area, almost a 10 uh, millimeter deeper than the front implant. So that reasons, uh, they have still bleeding. This is after six months later, still a lot of bleeding. Then patient asked me to remove this implant. But this is the full contact of the uh, bone area. Then uh, at the time I used a fixture removal kit. That's a very, very helpful. Normally, uh, such a full contact implant cannot remove by another devices, but uh, this device easily remove from the body. Because we can uh, uh, keep the 400 Newton centimeter by the, uh, this uh, ratchet. Okay. After the removal of the implant, what the problem is we lost a lot of bone. We really lost a lot of bone. In this case, uh, so-called, this is the uh, type five uh, by the uh, Grauser classification in the Zurich University. Type five means that they have no bone at all, even for the vertical level. Then at the time they recommend uh, to use the uh, autogenous uh, block graft. Okay, then I try to get a, a or just bone graft harvesting from the uh, tin area. Also, the uh, neobiotic provides us the uh, CTMM, which is a very uh, thin and very easy to uh, handle, and also keep the good stress mating, uh, maintenance here. Also, the GBR kit, also good for the uh, bone harvesting, block fixation, and also fixation with the membrane also. That's very, very uh, useful. And sometimes SEM also very uh, useful to get the uh, bone harvesting area. For example, if you want to have the uh, or just a bone tip, at that time you should use the ACM. This is a very, very safety uh, device that uh, during depth is only four millimeters. And finally, we got a really lot of the bone harvesting from the site.
This is the result of that. You can see that it's a lot of the bone, even one or two dream. Okay. Back to the case. Here, first, uh, I should the uh, preparation of the uh, recipient side here. It means uh, we should place the uh, bone grout here. Then first, we should uh, make a plain uh, aspect to keep the uh, harvested bone grout here. Then open the chin area, try to uh, make the very low trauma, and as the tray fiber, okay. Then uh, as the uh, GBL kit to make the screw hole, just a center of the uh, harvesting bone graft. Then harvest or just bone graft to the recipient side with the uh, GBL screw, GBL kit screw. And most important is you should very tight fixation. It's really need a tight fixation or just bone graft to the uh, residual bone. Then placement of the uh, CT man fix with the GBL kit uh, screws, uh, tension free graft, then suturing. Okay. Now, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention, and I hope to see you in the GAO symposium next near future. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you for the lecture, Dr. Nakajima. It's my pleasure. Okay, uh, any question? It's, uh, okay. Hmm. Maybe no? Oh, yeah, one doctor wants to ask something. Uh, please yeah. talk, doctor. Uh, okay, uh, Q and A. When we make the decision to expand the feeling implant. Okay, uh, Mr. Kim, can you hear me? Mr. Kim. Can you hear? Hi. Can you hear me? Here, uh, I can see the Q and A list here. Okay. Uh, can okay. you or you cannot or you can? I I can I can. Yes. Uh. Can. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Just you can answer. Okay. The, this question is uh, when we make the decision to explantation the uh failing implant, then uh, it's very difficult for me, but. Uh, I am the one with the period don't, don't this. So I want to keep the implant as much as possible. Then I try to uh, do the plug control as much as possible. Then in the period, we can also discuss with the patient. If finally patient asks me to remove it, at that time I remove that. Does that make sense? So everything I ask to the records from the patient, that's my uh, answer. Okay, uh, another question is, uh, is in the chat box. Uh, do you recommend water peak for plague removal? Uh, 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 okay. Uh, uh, when I young, young time, I use the water peak, but it doesn't make, I think uh, uh, it's uh, very difficult to uh, remove the plaque. Water peak can, for example, uh, take the food or something. But the plug accumulation is uh, you need a scratching in the mechanical uh, uh, mechanical uh, cleaning means you should use the uh, uh, brush and the water peak is very expensive, right? This is my question uh, answer. Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, answering. All right, uh, any other question?
Okay, uh, I don't see any other question more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. Okay, again, thank you for the, the lecture, Dr. Nakajima. It was a very you. impressive lecture. Okay, attendees, uh, we'd like to ask some feedback from, uh, for the today webinar. There will be an extra pop-up screen with five questions. So please uh, share one minute for us. We will always try the best for improving the quality of the webinar for your satisfaction. This lecture will be uploaded in our website with a YouTube video sooner or later. And please stay connected with New Biotech social media to communicate with us more. Search New Biotech in Facebook and YouTube and like or subscribe to get more information. For the next upcoming webinar, there will be on 21st day next week. The topic will be about identity solution and the language will be Spanish. Please get informed that we do not have a translation service. If you have any questions or information needed, please contact us by email address. And don't forget you can get more information in our website and social network service. Thank you for the attending our webinar again. We hope all of you enjoyed this time. Please have a good day or good night. See all of you next time again. Thank you. Bye bye.